Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about bowel obstruction. Let's first begin with the signs and symptoms and how a person can present. So the signs and symptoms of a bowel obstruction include nausea, vomiting, cramping, abdominal pain, constipation, and inability to basically do a poop or diarrhea. Possibly there can be a distended abdomen, fever as well as tachycardia. So bowel obstructions, as the name suggests, is obstructions of the bowel. It can be of the small intestine or it can be of the large intestine. In this video, we're going to mainly focus on the small intestine, but it applies for the large as well. So let's first see an obstructed bowel here. Let's see a sphincter to represent the obstruction. And the obstructions can be caused by many things, which we look at. But essentially, if we have an obstruction, the food that we eat will pile up, of course. And this can cause some serious problems because, you know, normally in the intestines, we actually find bacteria. Commensal organisms that live within our intestine. And when the bacteria is exposed to all of the nutrition, it will begin to grow essentially. But before looking at the pathophysiology, let's look at how bowel obstructions can be categorized. And it can be categorized into a mechanical obstructions or pseudo obstruction. Let's just first focus on mechanical obstructions. And there are five main types of mechanical obstructions. The first type of mechanical obstructions, the most common is what's known as an adhesion. And it's essentially where two parts of the bowels are basically connected with each other via sort of fibrous bands. So this, so this referred to as adhesions, and this can cause an obstruction. The other most common type of obstructions is we have an essentially a tumor and a cancer growth within the bottle itself, and this can lead to an obstruction. Another type of mechanical obstruction is known as the intersusception. Intersusception is essentially when a part of the bowel invaginate itself. So there's some terminal terminology we have to know about intersusceptions. And the first one is the part of the bowel that goes into the other part of the bowel. This is known as the intersusceptum. And part of the bowel that is on the outside surrounding, it is now known as the intersusceptum. Another cause of mechanical obstruction is hernia. And hernia is essentially a protrusion of the part of the intestines to the abdominal wall. Because the abdominal wall could be weak, for example, and it, this gets sort of strangulate the intestines causing obstruction. Finally, the last type of mechanical obstruction is referred to as the volvulus. And this is essentially where we get twisting of the bowels. So now, let us look at each of these five types and sort of describe in a bit more detail. In most common cause of mechanical obstruction is post-operative adhesions. So this is essentially when you have a surgery of the abdominal cavity and the opening of the abdominal cavity. Adhesions cause extrinsic compressions of the bowel that can lead to an obstruction. Now, the cancer. So colorectal cancer is a common and lethal disease. And the risk factors for cancer bowel include age, family, obesity, inflammatory bowel disease, and certain types of diets. So this self-explanatory, a tumor can grow so large that it can cause an obstruction. Now, intersusception is a rare in adults. Between about 1 to 5% of mechanical valves junction is a result of intersusception. Common sites of intersusception is the ileocecal valve. So this is essentially when the valve, the ileocecal valve just basically goes, invaginates into the cecum, resulting in an intersusception. The next type of mechanical destructions is hernia, which is defined as protrusions or bulge projections of an organ or a path of an organ through the body wall that normally contains it. Hernias can be internal or external. So in the diagram above, we have an example of a hernia that watching out intestines that is bulging out of the abdominal cavity, which is the wall that normally contains it. So the last type of mechanical obstructions that we'll talk about is the volvulus, which is the twisting of other segments 
of the intestines around a fixed point. Common signs of volvulus includes a cecum and a sigmoid area of the colon. A small bowel additions can lead to a volvulus. So those examples of mechanical obstructions, adhesions, cancer, intersusceptions, hernia, and volvulus. Now, let's look at the pseudo-obstruction. Pseudo-obstructions, as the name implies, is a pseudo or false obstructions, also known as obstruction. But regardless, it does result in the obstructions of the bowel. So the main examples we look at are myopathy, the problems with the muscles in the neuropathy, problems with the innervations of the bowel. And then we look up at the specific type of conditions known as Hirschsprung disease. Hirschsprung disease affects the distal part of the colon. So myopathy problem with the muscles result in no movement or peristaltic contractions and thus are, this can lead to an obstruction because the food just doesn't go through. The neuropathy problems of the nerve innervations of the bowel means that we can have no innervations of the small smooth muscles which means we have an abnormal movement. So we get constrictions. Finally, Hirschsprung disease is a congenital condition. So it's present in the baby and that is where we have a nerves that are missing at the distal end of the colon. Surgery can correct this. So regardless of the cause, you know the pseudo-obstructions or the mechanical obstructions, it results in two obstructions. And obstructions means that the materials or the substance that we eat cannot pass through the bowel smoothly. So let's just go back to the diagram here and look at what can cause. So food that piles up here can be metabolized by the bacteria that are normally residing in the areas to producing gas. Gas accumulates causing a bowel distension. Bowel distension can compress the vessels that supply the bowels so we can have a venous compression. When we have a venous compression, this means that we have a decrease in oxygen supply to that area to the bowel. And thus we have a decrease in oxygenation. Decrease in oxygenation results in a few things. Firstly, because we have no oxygen supply to the bowels, the cells of the intestines might die. Second, no oxygen supply decreases peristalsis, further aggravating the bowel distensions, so essentially we have no more distension. Decreasing oxygenation also promotes the bacteria into the area to enter circulations because they, they are anaerobic, they can enter circulation. So when the bacteria enters the circulations and when we have the intestinal cells dying, all these essentially are toxic. All of these are toxic and all of these toxins can cause and enter the circulations resulting in some form of sepsis. That was one aspect of it. Further, when we breathe air, goes down our intestines, is normal. But this realistically aggravated the bowel distensions. It promotes the distinctions of the bowel. So again, we have, you know, the bowel distensions and this compresses the vessels we have been as a compression. And when we have finished compressions, which we haven't looked at it in the actual results in fluid being secreted. Because all of the fluid piling up in this area, it's just secreted out into the bowel. When fluid is being secreted into the bowel, we lose water. And when we lose water, we lose electrolytes. And when we lose electrolytes and water, it results hypotension. So we actually get shocked. So bowel distension simply results in the hypotension. Also, when we get distensions of the bowel, this sort of triggers some nerves in the bowel which sends signals up to the brain and trigger to the vomiting response. Because the brain thinks that there's something wrong with this area and it was to get rid of it. So vomiting is triggered but vomiting doesn't really help to cure such scenario. Because when we vomit, we lose water and we, lo we also lose electrolytes which results in the hypertension again. So we get hypovolemic shock. So shock can result from the hypotensions or shock can result from sepsis, which is when we get no the bacteria entering the circulation. But the complications of bowel obstructions can be three main things. One, bowel ischemia, which we just means that we have the decreased supplies of oxygens to the bowel. 
Two is perforations. If the bowel is stented so much, it could perforate. And three, sepsis. When the toxins in the bacteria enter into circulations due to the necrosis of the area. So again, when we have venous compressions, this means that the healthier liver doesn't get blood supply to it and thus dies. And when it dies, this releases toxins in the circulations. It also allows the bacteria to move to the bowel into the circulations. Number two, the complications and perforations. So here we have the lumens of the bowel. If the bowel grows and distends due to the gas buildup in the air, it essentially perforates releasing the gut contents into the peritoneum. This can cause peritonitis, causing a massive problem. Next is sepsis. It's due to the perforations and due to the systemic disseminations due to the death, the dying cells in the area. 